Hi everyone and uh, welcome to my next uh, build. Uh, I'm going to be doing a Broncos Cruiser Tank. I'm going to be doing the uh, Mark 1A9. Um, I won't bother doing a review of the kit. Uh, my good friend Panzermeister has done a, a, a wonderful review on his channel. Uh, if you have a look in the, the description uh, details of this video, you'll see a link uh, if you want to have some uh, info on the actual kit itself. Obviously, as I'm building it, I'll uh, let you know if there's any issues. Uh, but I've done quite a few Bronco kits, and I've been very pleased uh, with uh, how they've gone. Uh, there will be a, a couple of little extras going on. Um, these these are the actual tracks. Um, not a great fan of these particular ones, so um, I've ordered up the full tracks. So hopefully they'll be with me soon, and I can make a start on those. And also I'll, I'll be uh, adding on a uh, metal barrel um, as well. Um, but other than that, it'll be pretty much an out-of-box build. The only decision I've got to make is um, what the actual final look's going to be. Um, I'm hedging my bets and hopefully going for the corner scheme. Uh, but I'll see how um, time and pressure and life in general, because um, it will be a bit of a challenge to uh, get that done. So thanks very much for, for joining me. Um, looking forward to this build immensely. So let's make a start. As you can see from the stills, the uh, hull wasn't a fun thing to do. Uh, my first word of advice is that on the instructions it tells you to put a lot of detailing on before you put the hull together. Don't do that because a lot of manhandling uh, had to be required to get this uh, put together. Um, strongly advise a dry fit. Um, a lot of alterations and scraping out and adjustments had to be made. Um, best way to do it is to uh, super glue it from the inside where possible. Um, put the super glue in strategic places and then once fully dry just very carefully go around with uh, Tamiya Thin and uh, reinforce the um, protection. Um, some of the areas aren't wonderful. Um, let's just have a look here. There's one section here uh, which is quite deep. Um, we have some holes on this side here. Um, so I'll just wait and see how the build progresses, how things get added on and if that all gets covered up. Uh, but if not at the end um, I'll either use some filler or some surfacer um, but now that's all done um, it certainly looks the part and, and now we can start putting some detail on it so the detailing is uh, well underway on the uh, base uh, with the uh, wheel supports put in um, just want to draw your attention to all this detailing it is superb um, and more importantly it's accurate so no need to uh, add any rivets um, very impressed with that indeed um, however, next we need to uh, add on some uh, plates. Um, these are the PE ones within the kit, nicely done. Um, just use a, a simple tool uh, to get those bent into place. However, unfortunately, the front ones are incorrect, so there shouldn't be any holes. Um, so um, I'll make those uh, from some plastic card uh, to, to replace those ones below. The next issue I had to look at was the uh, springs. Um, as you can see, uh, we have a, a nasty seam line going down uh, the centre on both sides. Um, also, they should be hollow, um, whereas you can see it's all one uh, solid piece. And also, um, the coils are, are 12 of them, where in fact they should be 17. Um, so I decided to make my own ones. Um, however, um, the, the main issue I had um, was that these coils um, are actually flat. I don't know if you can see that on there. Um, I'll put the reference still up and you can see that they're, that they're actually flat coils. Um, and no matter how much I tried to, to replicate that, I didn't get uh, a satisfactory result. So I decided in the end um, just to go for a, a straightforward uh, coil. Um, using uh, 0.5mm uh, wire and that way I was able to get the uh, 17 um, coils in um, 
slightly smaller uh, to, to, to my liking that they are actually more in scale and uh, as you can see from the finished piece um, I think it looks uh, a lot better and, and more realistic. So let's have a look at the uh, wheels. Um, first off, the detailing on, on the wheels um, is exemplary. i um, not had to, to add any detailing whatsoever. Very impressed. Um, the only thing on the uh, rear um, sprocket is there are six little recess holes here. Uh, but quite frankly, doing that would, would probably uh, mess up the uh, kit part. So I'm happy just to leave those off. Um, also to be aware that the... Uh, part either side of the uh, metal teeth is in fact a tyre uh, so a little bit of uh, de-stressing was done uh, there um, and as far as the uh, teeth go themselves as with most sprockets there is a seam line so that's all been removed but yeah nicely detailed with those as for the track wheels there's two large ones at the front um, these have a nice little detail in the middle here because um, that will differentiate between the ones that are just behind it uh, which don't have the detail and there's four of those and behind this one uh, then there's two each of these uh, small ones um, as you can see I've uh, distressed the tires um, very simply using a coarse sand stick and then using a, a rapier file just to take out a, a few little chunks here and there because being in the desert there's going to be a lot of wear and tear and in fact on some of the research photos um, there are some uh, spare tires uh, hanging off the turret um, which I'll do some scratch building on and then uh, the little um, support rollers for the tracks again beautifully detailed um, with, with the hull um, the only issue really um, is this front spring uh, which is completely incorrect so I'll have a go at scratch building that um, but I won't take anything off just in case um, it, it doesn't go too well and I may have to end up using that anyway. see from the still there was an issue with uh, lining up uh, the wheels um, basically uh, the this part behind is completely flexible um, so it can go up or down um, obviously if you want to do a diorama with it going up some rocks or, or whatever um, however that doesn't help somebody who just wants to have a static um, tank with level wheels so you have to be very careful with that and also this particular part here um, has a locator pin uh, but is very flexible by about one or two mil um, again which doesn't help matters um, so that was certainly an, an issue um, and will be taken into account when doing the other three sections also on the back uh, the wheel um, here uh, again that has about one mil worth of uh, wriggle room so again be very careful because that will affect when doing your tracks now the bogies had a, a nasty join line going all the way through it uh, so despite my uh, best efforts of filling uh, and sanding a lot of the um, texture was lost um, so it was just a matter of um, applying um, some Mr. Surfacer um, just using an old um, tin foil uh, cup and then that was um, diluted um, using uh, Tamiya thinner and then just apply it with an old brush uh, just to put that texture back in again. Now Bronco have uh, made a mistake uh, with the side bins. Um, this is the one that goes on the right hand side and that's correct uh, where you have the two bins and a little side bin at the end. 
however the one that goes on the left um, should in fact be just two bins um, so basically all of this detail will have to come off um, and two new doors made uh, on each side so we just have the two doors that spread across the whole of the bin um, and this will give me an opportunity to, to open up these bins and, and then we'll, we'll put some little uh, tools and bits and bobs inside there as well to add a bit of a feature to the model. Let's have a look at the uh, fenders now. The uh, kit offers you uh, a few options um, with which ones to go for. Um, not very clear so I basically went with the reference photographs that I was using and picked out the ones that were the same. Um, what that meant was that um, as you can see um, the front part of the fender needed changing um, which as always uh, will uh, create a weak point um, so when filling um, I always add in some glue um, at that point as well as the filler and that gives it a, a, a more strengthened bond um, as you can see there are a few rivets uh, missing um, around the actual fenders themselves um, however these aren't actually rivets they are in fact uh, flat screws um, so it's just a matter of adding the rivets um, and then getting your craft knife um, not only with the new ones but also the molded ones and just very carefully putting a, a line in each one to create the screw thread um, unfortunately with um, British armour they don't have the um, backup of after material um, like the German vehicles do so there's no fenders available so it is a matter of uh, sanding down and stripping down the fender as much as possible either using your Dremel um, or your combo drill with a sanding part on the end and getting them nice and thin and then as you can see here you can start to create some damage um, give the uh, fenders a little bit better form um, which will obviously look more realistic um, when painted up um, so yeah happy with the uh, fenders um, once all cleaned up um, and all the details being added they'll look very nice on the side of the tank quick point of reference the uh, towing eyes uh, which are marked on the kit is a b19 here and also the molded bracket on the main kit part uh, that doesn't appear on the uh, cruiser a9 that i'm building um, so the bracket and the um, towing eye will be removed uh, whether it's part of um, another version i don't know but for my model these won't be included So let's have a look at the uh, tracks. Uh, the kit offering are, are very good, um, beautifully detailed. Um, won't need a great deal of um, cleaning up other than um, the um, sprue attachment. The only difference being is that they're slightly incorrect in the, the sense that the uh, guiding tabs are straight down, whereas in fact that they should be curved. Um, but if you don't want to do a replacement set and you're happy with um, linked link and length type tracks then these would be very good ones to use um, however I've decided to uh, swap them out and use uh, full tracks um, these are the uh, ATL 182's as you can see there and they're very small um, they come in three packs and I'll come on to the third pack in a second um, I'm assuming uh, they are left and right um, however, I've had a good look at them and I can't see any difference um, at all. But um, to be on the safe side, I'll, I'll make one length up with this side and another length with these ones. Um, there is um, some little seam lines on them and a little bit of flash. Um, so they will need uh, cleaning up. And there you go. That's That little bump there is pretty well much on all of them, so that will have to go. But as you can see here, we, we, we've got the curvedness. Uh, which you don't get on the um, kit part 
um, beautifully detailed as you'd expect um, and they are going to go together quite quickly because um, it really is just a matter of putting one against another one like so and slotting them in together and it's difficult doing it on camera there we go and then on this side you have um, two little holes there and you get a whole packet um, of connectors here again one has a square side um, and one has a rounded side so they, they will just slot in um, and then it really is just a matter of making sure that you don't get any CA glue on the actual pin bits and just make sure that uh, the glue is apart, applied on this part here so they're still fully workable so small and fiddly uh, but should go together quite quickly now the third bag um, is this one here and with these particular links um, the actual connectors have been set at an angle I don't know how well um, you can see that on here there you go so, so they're not straight of course they're, they're up at an angle and uh, you actually use those to go around the, the, um, the, the wheels at the front and at the back as you can see here um, so with the um, instructions uh, you have six link, links hit this end nine links this end um, and then that will uh, fit around uh, perfectly well so very pleased with them um, just need to get them cleaned up and like I say should go together quite quickly so the tracks are done um, probably the easiest set of metal tracks I've ever had to put together um, from cleaning to completion only took about three hours uh, now the problem I have is the links are a little bit smaller than the kit ones so I've done 28 links on the top 28 links along the bottom and then you have the um, six and the nine bendy ones around the sprockets and the front wheel um, it's very difficult to judge at this stage because obviously everything's off the kit and these are rather heavy um, but it does look like it's going to be too short so I'm going to have to leave the, the tracks until the very last thing that I do um, once the whole model has been painted and weathered and all the wheels and bogies have been stuck stuck on and then I can start to uh, work out what the uh, track uh, lengths are going to be exactly and obviously I'll give that information um, as and when I get it um, but at the moment I've got about 20 links spare per side and uh, plenty of um, um, pins to put in there as well so certainly no issue with shortage With the build of the A9 now complete, there's just a couple of uh, bits just to uh, tie up some loose ends. Uh, these brackets here 
um, are listed incorrectly on the instructions. Uh, they tell you to put the large ones on, but it's, it's the small, thinner ones that you need to do. Um, coming around this side, um, as you can see, all the PE straps are now put on. Um, very pleased with how that's all done. And the back rack um, had to be welded together, but that's all done now and come out very well. Um, I've got a few odds and ends to put in there uh, right at the end of the build, um, so that'll add, add a little bit of interest in there. Um, at the front here, uh, these lights are extremely fragile, and as soon as I took them off the sprue, uh, they just uh, fell apart. Um, so I scratch built some new ones with some 5mm wire and uh, some little 3mm ringlets. Um, quite straightforward, so, so no issues there. Um, and we put a few little conduit wires in for the lights here and there as well. So that one's all complete there. Looking at the turret, that came out very well indeed, uh, went together really nicely. Um, one or two little issues, the um, side handles from the kit were far too large, um, so the um, locating pinhole was uh, filled in and, and new ones made. Um, I don't know how well you can see that, but um, all of this had to be rebuilt because it was incorrect. So I've got a little butterfly nut on there, um, and there's a, a little bracket for it to sit on. Um, along with um, the conduit wire um, the barrel um, nicely up in the air so that will make life easier for painting um, there were some bad um, injector marks there at the bottom of this little bucket so, so that was all uh, filled in um, other than that this this has just gone together so so nicely and it's so well detailed very very impressed indeed and obviously at the very end uh, there will be um, uh, an aerial put um, at the back there. So there we have the uh, completed uh, build of Bronco's 135th scale Cruiser A9. Uh, lovely kit, um, obviously a few issues but that's me trying to be uh, making it accurate. But if you just want a bog standard out of the box build uh, you'll not get much uh, better than this. Um, lovely detailing and fits very well indeed. Um, so what will happen now is that I'm going to be painting it probably um, Libya 1940-41 so going for a corner scheme however there will be a little bit of a twist to that. So look forward to uh, seeing you all on the next update video for this particular build and it just leaves me to say thank you very much indeed for your continued support of my work and all of the subscriptions to the channel. Happy modeling everyone!